Now tell me if you recognize this tune and where you might recognize it from. Is that the song that plays the Cyrus' fucking Corvette? Yeah, it is, man. It's a song called I'm Old, You're Young. And uh, in the early seasons of uh, Trailer Park Boys, when you saw Cyrus in his Corvette, that was the track that was playing uh, whenever he'd jump in his ride and take off or when he was pulling up on the scene. Uh, yes, uh, Jeffrey was the last name of the guy that, that wrote and performed that tune. I can't remember his first name. Robert? I can't remember. Um, I found it on YouTube after doing a little bit of research. But Vic Nasty, I'm going to pull out the old dial pad here. I'm going to clear out your phone number, and I'm going to dial up tonight's guest, Mr. Bernard Robichaud. Uh, I believe he's uh, tonight. I think we're going to find him up north in Canada. I know he was down here in the States last week when I reached out and talked to him and asked him about the interview. And uh, he was more than happy to uh, come on and talk with us. And I'm super excited about this, Vic, because, you know, love the trailer park boys uh, and the chance to talk with any of those that have worked on that show and to hear not only about that but you know about what they're doing today seven locks rock you know i can't wait to see that movie that he's doing with uh, lee mckinnis and loxley as he plays python the band manager extraordinaire Hell we'll get yeah. the phone ring a ding ding in here see if we can't get mr bernard on the phone tonight hopefully he uh, answers this strange number that's dialing his phone i know hello who don't like a look Hey, good evening. How are you? Hello. Big Perm and Vic Nasty. Hey, Big Perm, Big Nasty. What's going on? What's up? Love and life, my man. Love and life. Love. I was hoping Love that. Uh, I was hoping when you saw that weird, strange phone number pop up on their phone that you'd answer it and, and not like blow it off like I do all the time. <laughs> no, no, I was expecting your call, so it's all good. All right, man. Well, listen. Uh, tonight, what we find you? Uh, you you back up in Canada tonight? I am, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I, uh, when be, I talk to you. It doesn't look like I'm back in the States till the end of August, but it looks like it. Well, when I talked with you last week or maybe a week and a half ago, you had mentioned you were down at the States, down in the States at that time. What had you down here? Yeah, I just got down to Florida and uh, um, hanging out and uh, doing a few appearances. That's about it. Right on, man. Nothing serious. Yeah. Cool enough. Well, listen, I wanted to introduce you to my co-host, Vic Nasty. Are you hanging there, Vic? Oh, yeah. Bernard, how's it, how's it hanging tonight, brother? I'm so good, buddy. You? Oh, uh, hey, a little to the left, and I do mean little. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> listen, <laughs> we, we wanted to bring you on tonight to talk to you about a bunch of shit, man. I mean, I'm not going to take up your whole night, um, but... Uh, you know, here shortly, uh, you're hitting the road with uh, Lee McKinnis, and you guys are going out on tour, um, touring around Ontario. I, I, I wish you guys would come to the States. We're looking forward to something like that down here, my man. Yeah, we're uh, <clears throat> we're in the process of uh, trying to put a tour together as we speak. So uh, hang on to your socks. Um, I know the promoters are working on it uh Right now, we hope that uh, that tour will <clears throat> happen uh, for the end of August. Hell yes! That's now, what, that's, those... a, that's what that's the shoot dates we're looking at anyway. Nice for the for our Canadian listeners. Um, we got a lot of fans up in Canada that listen to our show for some reason. <laughs> I can't figure it out. Um, the show that you're doing with Lee, um, it's not only you and Lee, but there's a couple of bands performing. Um, I mean, what can folks expect? You know, from that show. Uh, comedy, um, some decent stories, some Q and a, uh, a lot of great music. So an evening of, uh, and then, you know, uh, of course uh, VIPs were VIP tickets and you're, you're hanging with, uh, Lee and I for the evening. Yeah. So, uh, I, I expect it to be a, a great night. A lot of fun. We've had Lee on the show a few times. He's always a blast to talk to, and we're thankful you took the time tonight. And uh, you know, we'll definitely stalk your Facebook page. And uh, as soon as you announce the U.S. tour dates, um, we'll definitely be uh, picking up the VIP tickets and coming in and seeing you, crazy bastards. 
Oh, that'd be great, man. Uh, we're the Midwest has uh, have been that way before uh, for doing uh, some hosting of uh, some uh, events there, and I uh, look forward to getting back. So that'd be great. Well, some I wanted to talk to you about um, since we're talking about the states and whatnot. Uh, you were born in Boston. Um, how long were you, did you stay in Boston before you, you headed north? Uh, not long. My dad uh, was. Uh, moved back to Canada so I was a young boy when uh, he he moved back so it wasn't it was a young boy yeah uh, it was not that long but uh, went back every year um, to visit family and uh, still in contact with my family there so yeah the reason I asked, I was just kind of curious how old you were. I've, I've interviewed a couple of guys that, that were from Boston, mobsters, guys that were actually in the mob and shit like that. And I was I was just curious, you know, if you were there like in your teen years, you know, kind of what it was like growing up in Boston as a kid. But uh, obviously you had moved away before before you reached uh, the teen years. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I still remember, though, going there as a child and uh, – uh, being in uh, Dorchester and Jamaica Plain, where my family uh, was from, JP. So um, yeah, they they live in uh, Belmont now. They're all over the place down the Cape, uh, Worcester, Leominster. You know, it's uh, they're scattered everywhere now. So, uh, but uh, oh, yeah. back then uh, they were back then they were isolated to uh, JP and. Uh, and uh, Dorchester, so uh, you know places that you only want to visit now if uh, you've got family there. Yeah, I feel you, man. I feel you. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Vic, let me throw it over to you, bud. But not as, as you know, as a fan, or when you know fans interact with you whenever they run into you, you know, out in public or you're out and about. You know, what's the first reaction? Is it the guy? Oh my God, it's the guy from Trailer Park Boys, or? Oh my God! It's that fucking Cyrus. You know what? You know what's the reaction you normally get? Yeah, a little bit of both of those, buddy. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it depends on uh, how big a fan they are of Cyrus, I guess. Uh, I, I, you know, I had a couple of guys last night around too who, you know, took some selfies and you know just you know couldn't couldn't believe it and got out and you know they they were. When I left, they were they were hugging each other. They they were just they just couldn't believe it. <laughs> so I, I think it just depends on how big a fan you are. But uh, I thought that was uh, <laughs> was kind of wild. I said, oh, okay, I didn't expect that one to happen, but okay. Um, whenever you yeah, you know, I think it just a, depends. Whenever you play a character yeah. like that, that's such a standout. You know, on on a show like you know, like the Trailer Park Boys with Cyrus. You know, he really stands out as. You know he's quite a bit different. There's like no, there's no levity with him. He's just a straight dick all the time. I mean, how much of you is in that character? Is there, or is that just like the total opposite of what you are in day to day life? Yeah, I like to think that's the total opposite of who I am in in everyday life. I mean, yeah. uh, I think we all know people like uh, Cyrus, and I, you know, I like to think that I um, developed the character. Not just from my own experience, obviously, but, uh, you know, uh, some of it was uh, the genius of the writing of Mike Clattenburg, too, and, and uh, you know, his direction, um, what he was looking for. And, and uh, you know, growing up in, um, you know, similar neighborhoods to what Trailer Park Boys is right. about. So um, I think uh, it was easy to... Um, identify with the character, of course, uh, because when you're growing up around it, um, you get a feel for it. And then uh, portraying the character, well, that was just, you know, that was just a lot of fun. You Definitely. know, we're, what the character, what the character did uh, was uh, where, and its popularity, uh, I think that was unexpected for me, but I guess everybody likes to hate the bad guy. Um, right. So, you know, I guess in that sense, it's a, a testament to uh, the development of the character. Yeah, Definitely. Like, like you said, everybody knows that guy with the Corvette and the Camaro or, you know, in the leather jacket. It seems like all of yeah. us know we can relate to that guy. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 
I'm sure I think most people can, to be honest with you. I don't know anybody that didn't grow up with, with, uh, you know, somebody like that, uh, you know, in the background, whether they were a friend of his or whether or not he was the bully. Um, I think, uh, I think a lot of people grew up with that and, and probably still are. I mean, you know, bullying, although it, there's uh, much more attention drawn to that now and it's looked, you know, it's not socially correct. I think there's, um, you know, there's a whole lot more people that are still dealing with that type of um, personality. Well, and I think that, he, that lends to the well, overall... Right. I say I think that's what lends to the overall success of Trailer Park Boys is just each each character is is so relatable. You know, you, you definitely know somebody like that in your life, whether it's Leahy or Randy or you know Cyrus or Ricky no, or whatever. Sure. J J Rock. Exactly. You know, I, I I grew up with a lot of no. J Rocks here in Peoria. Let me tell you. <laughs> I, yeah, I no, I think you, that though, that was why the show was so popular. Is the is that there were so many characters that were identifiable to uh, someone's youth or in their, you know, while they were growing up. Uh, uh, yeah, no, it's, that's, that's totally correct. As far as I'm concerned, that's exactly why it's been, it's been so popular. So I got to ask, man, how many times do you go to the store, you know, to like buy a loaf of bread or a gallon of milk or some shit and you're walking down the aisle and all of a sudden it's, you know, fuck off. I got work to do. I don't get the fuck off. I got work to do too often because if it's in a store like that, uh, you know, they try to keep it down to a low roar. Um, right. I might get a safety always off more often in a store like that or a public area. I do get fuck off. I got work to do quite often. There's no question about that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if I'm going to the grocery store, uh, there's yeah you know people know who i am there's no question about that it's it's i'm not, I'm not trying to hide right um, so uh you know uh yeah i totally i totally get that on a daily basis uh it doesn't really matter where i go i mean uh when i was way in the states it happens uh happened while i was in florida um you know uh um but you know i think generally People are either just excited or curious or um, appreciative. Um, you know, there I don't really run into too many people that are um, obnoxious. Uh, I mean, it happens when people sometimes have had too too much to drink. Exactly. But, um, and I and I haven't. Uh, but uh, for the most part, I think people are um, uh, pretty genuine and and uh, and are just either happy to, to meet me or grateful for both that and uh, and the character. Oh, yeah. It's been humbling for me, so it's been it's been an interesting um, fifteen years uh, thus far, or more since for dealing with the. Uh, Dealing with the character and the spinoff from what's uh, what it's created. Well, let's shift gears and talk a little bit about uh, Seven Locks Rock. Um, the character you play in that film sure. is uh, Python, uh, band manager extraordinaire. <laughs> um, yeah. With uh, you're in that with Lee McInnes and uh, Loxley. Um, I'm just I'm yeah. curious as to uh, you know how the film came about and uh, you know you teaming up with Lee and Loxley to make this thing happen. Yeah, it was uh, David and uh, Angie Paradise in uh, the UK. Um, I had been friends with uh, Angie, the producer, for some time on Facebook when uh, her and David uh, approached me um, uh, playing a part in the in the movie. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Comedy, rock and roll, uh, got a little bit of everything in it. Most definitely. Now, this, I think Lee's Loxley. over. Uh, I think Lee's over there now. Actually, uh, uh, he's over there now. That I think he's doing a. I think he's doing a uh, music video for them. Yeah, see, I think I saw that last couple of days ago on Facebook. He was in Bath or something like that over there in India. Yeah. 
exactly. It's it it looks great, man. Um, rock and roll and comedy. I mean, you can't get much. You know, you can't ask for much more than that. And then, you know, to have uh, you and then uh, Lee. Now, I want to know about the Loxley character a little bit. What can you tell us about that guy? Um, he's uh, he's uh, he's an actual uh, uh, rock and roll uh, guy. He's uh, I met him in Vancouver on tour, um, and uh, he's been in England for a number of years playing uh, metal, heavy rock over there. So, uh, and he's a friend of Ange and Dave's, and I think that's how it all came about. That um, that's how certainly how the story uh, line is developed. I think through his uh probably his trials and tribulations of uh um, working in that industry in the uk gotcha now is there has there been a release date set for this i mean we're at we're at exactly no still in uh still still in still in uh pre-production right now and uh just lining up their ducks so uh, i'd like to think that uh we'll see something in the next uh, few months coming, um, uh, but uh, I don't make those decisions, of course. I'm just uh, right. I'm just one of the actors, yeah, doing my thing, and uh, I'll uh, I'll let them make the big announcements when it's ready, and uh, I'm sure it'll be all over Facebook and and Twitter when it when it is announced. Awesome. Well, Vic, let me throw it back to you, man. I'm sure you're full of questions. Bernard, I was also, you know, of course, a fan of Haven, you know, the Sci-Fi Channel show, and, you know, you were on there for, uh, you know, you were on there as well with, you know, fellow, you know, alum from the Trailer Park Boys, you know, you had, you know, John Dinsmore and, you know, I forget the gentleman's, Judd Dunsworth, sorry about that, and you also had the guy that played his brother in the show that he played, you know, a couple of small parts on Trailer Park Boys as well. What was like the transition from, you know, Trailer Park Boys to Haven, and, you know, which do you find more challenging, the comedy uh, acting or, you know, something more, you know, serious, you know, serious, more dramatic? Jeez, I don't know that I've ever really thought about that. Um, I don't know that there's any transition for me. I just, I get a script. Uh, I look at the character. Uh, there's association with the, uh, characters around him, what he needs to do to get from A to Z within the plot. Um, And then I kind of picture all that in my head, like uh, it was much the same as when you read a book and you have all the characters talking in your head, you know. Um, And, you know, I make those choices. Uh, while I'm doing that, and then, um, and then uh, you know, uh, if the director sees it going a different way, well, then um, uh, you know, I listen to his direction and I take it from there. But I don't know that I find either one of them any more challenging than the other. Um, love comedy. Um, sometimes uh, I think my natural um, oh, great. The get him! Get him! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I think it's um, um, yeah. Lost my train of thought with the dogs now. <laughs> Sometimes I think it's. Uh, we were talking uh, which is more challenging, comedy or, or drama, or, you know, which do you Yeah, prefer? I don't know that, ex- exactly. I don't know that either one of them is, I think my natural tendency is to look for the humor in everything. I think it's just a natural reaction in it or a natural um, defense mechanism from um, my childhood. So sometimes I have to remember that and uh, when I'm doing drama, so that can be a bit of, that's probably the challenge that I run into more so than I would if I was doing comedy and it just naturally comes 
that way. You know, it comes out of my mouth and my mind that way, you know. Definitely. Also, another thing I wondered, uh, Bernard, uh, was there a connection between uh, the, the Trailer Park Boys and Haven, or is that just something that just seemed to happen with the different characters from no, each show? Yeah, no, that just was uh, another production that was running at the same time, and uh, uh, John Dunsworth just, you know, was fortunate to land a significant role in that. Uh, John's a great actor, and, uh, you know, in my opinion, he was certainly the right guy for the role, and um, I was lucky enough to land the role of Kirk, which, who wasn't, um, you know, it's another bad guy that I got to play. I seem to play a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you do so well at it, man. Uh, we, we love it, so keep doing it. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, listen, I, I don't want to take up too much more of your Sunday night. Um, you know, we just wanted to get you on here for a short short chat tonight and see what was new with you. Um Hoping like hell that everything works out for a tour down here in the States in August. We'd uh, love to have you come through Peoria or anywhere close to Chicago, St. Louis. We'll drive. We'll come see your ass. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Uh, you know, we've got some, uh, we've got a lot of feelers going uh, out there. I think there's a lot of interest. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the goal right now is, uh, you know, the Ontario tour is, that's done right now. Everybody's working towards uh, working towards the U.S. tour. Uh, so it'd be Lee and I, and uh, and uh, we're bringing on uh, Rita Carey, who's uh, uh, quite an accomplished um, uh, musician, um, singer. Uh, it's Jim Carey's sister. Oh no shit! So we'd be talking. To- yeah, so we'd be touring with her. Um, so she'd be doing the music uh, for us um, in the venues that we that we go to. So, yeah, we we think that there's um, there's a good chance that this tour is going to happen. I, like I said, I was still in the works because we just started working on the promoters just started working on it maybe in the last week and a half. So there's still some groundwork to to take place, but um we as far as i'm concerned i'm i'm in uh, lee's in uh reed is in so it's just a question of uh finding uh venues that uh, are in the cities that uh trailer park boys has already been successful in and um and hoping that one of those venues says yes we'll take the show Pretty much as uh, I know there's. As that. I know there's a few here in Illinois. Uh, I know uh, Dunsworth and, and uh, Tarasco have both been through uh, up up north in Illinois. Um, spots in Indiana, um, all around Illinois. So even if you don't make it to Illinois, um, shit, Iowa, Indiana, Michigan, it's all four or five hour drive for me. We'll come and see it. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask. Right. You know, besides the tour. And 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 the Seven Locks Rock. Um, are there are there any other projects that you're working on? Anything new coming up? Well, we've got uh, Sea Change. Uh, we shot the pilot for that last uh, summer. Uh, that's based on the New York Times bestseller, um, and that's a series that I, um, we hope that uh, I hope to see the pilot come out short soon. And uh, I think Lifetime Network picked it up, so um, nice. just waiting on word on that to see when uh, when the possibility of that going to camera is. Um, so there's that for sure. Uh, well, hey, I guess that's one Barry Dunn. of my old lady being yeah. a Lifetime freak. <laughs> my old lady watches Lifetime yeah, all the go. time. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. So there's uh, there's that and. Um, and I'm in the. Uh, I'm working with Barry Dunn, who is the original producer for Trailer Park Boys, on a new TV series uh, that we are creating um, called Cranky Cab, and uh, based on a written like Trailer Park Boys. We have ten episodes right now. Uh, we're just in the process of going 
through those, uh, rewriting, rewriting. Um, so uh, we're a little ways off, but we have broadcasters that are interested in the in the series. So we'll just uh, wait and see. Did you say it was called Cranky Cab, like as in a taxi cab? That's right. What's What's the idea? I mean, is it like it, what's it about? Because I'm a I'm a cab driver. It's a hybrid. Uh, we shoot. Uh, Part of it would be uh, revolves around two brothers and uh, and uh, their um, you know their family and and uh, what goes on in that uh, dysfunctional family and uh, one brother's jealous of the other one um, one owns a limousine company one owns a cab one is married to the guy that uh, one is married to the girl that uh, the other brother who has the cab always wanted. So you've got those jealousies running in. So, uh, and then hybrid with actual footage um, from either uh, the cab or the limousine. Nice man. I'm, I'm, I can't so, wait to see that. Me being the cab driver, you know, it, uh, it's right up my alley. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Well, that'd be uh, we're we're looking forward to that. It's a ways off, but uh, still in the early stages of it. But. Uh, um, yeah, I've been, been involved with Barry now for about the last year working, working on that. So, and for our listeners, um, if you, if you don't recognize the name Barry Dunn, um, Barry was Ray off the trailer park boys. If you want to put a face to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, that was well, a great character too. Fuck yeah, it was man. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. <laughs> God, he yeah. did such an awesome job with Ray. Um, it, and it's yeah. and again out of all those characters, it, it's so hard to say that 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 I have a favorite um, because they were all, again all so relatable and and just all great in their own way. It's hard to pick a favorite, whether it was you as Cyrus or, or Ray or you know Mike as Bubbles or whatever. Yeah, yeah, lots of uh, lots of great characters, and I think that everybody's got their favorites for sure, but. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of great characters there, uh, a lot of great talent. So, yeah, it was uh, it was uh, an honor and a pleasure to be part of it. That's for sure. Well, Vic Nancy, well, let me throw back part of it. I guess as long got... as it's uh, as long as it's still on Netflix or being syndicated, I guess uh, it'll be <laughs> it'll still be part of it, right? Oh, fuck, man! And there's YouTube, bro. I mean, you'll live forever on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe so. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Vic, I don't. We've only got a couple minutes left tonight, man. You got any uh, final questions or parting shots? Bernard, it was, it was an honor to have you on, man. Whether you know for the Trailer Park Boys or Haven, you know, or you know what you got upcoming. I can't wait to see what you got going on in the future, man. And I'll definitely be checking it out. And it was great having you on, brother. Thanks very much. Uh, thanks for having me on. I appreciate the time. Uh, it was very kind of you to both to think of me. Uh, and uh, yeah, if, uh, um, I'm looking forward to doing some more work myself. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you guys both in the U.S. Uh, starting sometime at the end of August. And and uh, <laughs> and and uh, there's there's my favorite song. <laughs> Fucking right, brother. <laughs> All right. Hey, listen uh, for myself. Vic Nasty, everybody listening, and I got to give a shout out to Donna's Trailer on Facebook. Uh, love that group over there, um, which I know you're a part of. Um, we all yeah. just we just want to say thanks, man, for taking the time tonight. And uh, now fuck off because we got work to do. <laughs> all right, man. Appreciate it. All right, it, buddy. Bernard, you have a great night, sir, and thanks again, man. Hey. You too. All right, later, peace. bud. All right, bye.